Hey, this is Justin with Adrenaline Barbecue Company, and this is Dave with Adrenaline Barbecue Company. <laughs> and today we are going to show you how to make lamb, and it's going to be awesome. 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 Yep. Awesome sauce. So that's our strong opening. Yep. So to be honest with you guys, I've actually never done done lamb before, and I think it I I think it's just because it intimidated me or something. I, I've never, I've never done it, so I'm glad you're here to explain it to me, walk me through it. Uh, is it something that's hard to do? No, you know, a lot of people don't grow up eating lamb, but lamb tastes great, easy to do. If you can cook a steak and trim a brisket or a pork butt, you can do a really good job cooking it. Does it take a long time to prep it? Or... Nope. Another thing, great thing about lamb is that it, uh, the meat's already salty, so you don't have to dry brine. So you can buy it the same day you're going to cook it and still have a, a tremendous uh, result. That's good to know. All right, we walked up to the calendar and there were 25 of these laying here. Yep. What What are we looking for with this? So, straight bones, because you'll see later we're going to cut these into what we call lamb lollipops, so straight bones are important for that. Look for a good circular hunk of meat on the end, and if you can see it through the vacuum packaging, try to pick one that has good marbling. That's it. That's it? That's all you need to do? That's it. That sounds great. That's okay. It. So we've got our we've got our lamb, we've got it home. What where do we where do we start with this? We gotta trim the fat. There's a lot of fat on these things and that stuff just is covering meat that we could be searing and giving a nice char flavor to. There's some silver skin over here, so we're just going to uh, cut off this fat. The first time you trim a lamb rib roast, be patient, expect it to take 15 minutes uh, or a little bit longer. Just trim off the fat and the silver skin until you're satisfied and then you should be good to go. Once you've trimmed it all up, we're going to carve it into lamb lollipops by carving it into pieces that are two bones each. So the lamb's prepped up and now it's time to season it. What's our plan as far as seasonings today? We're going to apply a wet marinade. It consists of four cloves of garlic, two teaspoons of crushed dried rosemary, a half teaspoon of ground black pepper, a dash of salt. We're going to mix that into some uh, extra virgin olive oil and make a paste. Then we'll coat the racks. Perfect, perfect. And then how long does that need to marinate? One to three hours. Helps uh, penetrate a little bit and uh, gives a little pop of flavor. Okay. So we'll be back here in three hours and we'll see you guys at the grill. Okay Dave, so how do you cook lamb in the kettle with a slow and sear? So we're going to cook these lamb chops using the reverse sear cold grate technique. If you'll focus on the kettle for a second here. We've got the slow and sear on this side, it's got 20 briquettes in there uh, with a chunk of hickory wood. We've got clean smoke and we're at about a 241 degrees based on the smoke thermometer. So see the charcoals over here, we're going to put the lamb on the indirect side and let it slowly warm up to 115 degrees. Put that cover back on so we keep our heat in. When the lamb hits 100, uh, I'm sorry, when the lamb hits 90 degrees, we're going to light a chimney uh, two-thirds full of charcoal. And by the time the lamb hits our desired temperature of 115 degrees, our charcoal should be fully lit. We can put that in the slow and sear, move the lamb over, and uh, start, uh, start searing. Uh, we'll give a cup, the, the grate a couple of meats, uh, a couple of minutes to cool off, and we'll show you the, the cold grate technique. The, uh, the lamb chops just tempt at 115, so we're going to go ahead and take those out, throw them on a plate. We've got our charcoal fully lit, ready to go. We're going to burn grate a couple of minutes to cool off, and then we'll be ready for the sear. So we're just going to go ahead and take these off now. Man, I don't know if you can see that. These things are gorgeous. They smell great, too. It's time to sear. Let's focus attention on the slow and sear here. We've got a fully lit bed of charcoal, evenly spread out. Even, even charcoal gives you even heat. Our grate has been sitting on the, the ground over here cooling off. We're going to go ahead and put this on. Cold grate technique. We want a cold grate. We start cooking. We're going to put our chops on this side so we cook them evenly. When we start searing, so we got that. We're going to spin them around, and then we'll start our timer. And we're going to sear these for a minute on each side. And 
and start the timer. It's funny how they don't start searing all. I'm used to hearing them sear as soon as they hit the grates. That is something that you definitely have to get used to because the grate is cold. Usually, you know, in a normal technique, like you said, they sear as soon as you apply the meat to, to the grate because it's hot. But now, the only thing searing the meat is the radiant heat from the charcoal. So you don't hear the sear until you're a few seconds into the cook. We're, they've been cooking on this side for about 30 seconds. You can, you can probably hear that now. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a nice sizzle. We're gonna be spinning the grate soon, 90 degrees, get the meat off the heat, and we're gonna flip the meat and then put it back on the heat. So are these flames a problem? No, the flames aren't a problem. As long as the meat's not on fire, I don't really care. And because we cut the fat off, the meat's not gonna be on fire. So we're a minute in, we're gonna go ahead and rotate these. And flip. And look at that nice sear that we have on that side after just one minute. It doesn't take long. It really doesn't. So we're at a minute and about 10 seconds. We'll let those go for another minute and then we're gonna rotate. It gets hard after this because we're gonna have to sear the sides and they don't always want to stand up on the sides but we'll do the best we can. So what are the advantages of the cold grate technique? I don't think we talked about that yet. One of the advantages is that you get an overall sear. So instead of having a cross hash mark, uh, sear marks on the on the meat, where you've got this you know nice sear mark in one section and then the rest is a pasty gray, we're gonna have an overall sear. And uh, we're coming up on time here pretty soon. We're gonna go ahead and rotate these. Uh, I should have just taken the lid off. Move these over for a second. Is that why it got hung up? Just because yeah. the lid's in the way? Well, the lid makes it harder. So, and this this part's tough here. So we're just going to lay them one on each other. One nice thing about the slow and sear is you don't have to cover the bones with aluminum foil to keep them from burning because they're they're on the indirect side right now, so the bones don't burn. Which makes it good because you will be able to use them as a handle to eat later. One of the worst things about bones is if you burn them, they, they fall apart when you try to eat. Okay. They look really good. Yeah, they're searing, searing really fast, so I don't think we even need a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and, and rotate these again. And uh, I'm not going to rotate the worry about the, the grate this time because I've got good placement here. Okay. And I, I want to keep the good placement. Let those go for another 30 seconds or so and we should be done. done. We'll move them to the indirect side. If they're not at our desired final temp, we'll just put the lid on for a, a second or two and let them warm up a little bit. Okay, so what is our desired final temp? 125 to 135. 125 gives you rare. 135 gives you the upper side of medium rare. We're gonna shoot for 130, which is a nice uh, middle of the road medium rare. Wall to wall red on the inside and uh, nicely seared on the outside. All right, these are done. I'm gonna move them over. Oh my gosh, they smell so good. Yeah. Oh. I don't know if you can come in again like you did on the steak video, but I mean, just look at the sear on those. We can see it, we can see it. Yeah, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Get our thermo pin. See how close we are to done. See, we're, yeah, we're a little low. Sorry, I'm gonna have to move in front of the camera. That's because my right handed and everything. Yeah, they cooled off a little bit while we were getting everything ready. So we're gonna let them warm up a little bit on this side, but they're, they're really close. Is there a trick, like if you under, I mean, it's better to undershoot than overshoot because you can't act. Exactly, and, yeah. and that's a good question. This is the trick. You're gonna use the cracked lid method. We're gonna let most of the heat escape on this side, and it leaves your indirect side in the 250 to 300 range, which is great. I mean, it's absolutely wonderful for hitting that final desired temp. And we'll just check them again with a thermo pin in a, in a minute or two. So wait, let me let me get this straight. You're saying if you crack the lid like that, even though you're roar, you have a roaring fire, you can keep the temps down on the opposite side. Oh yeah, that's that that's worth the price of admission right there. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's works awesome. great. Yeah, cool. All right. We'll 
See you guys back in the kitchen. <laughs> Man, that smells good. These do smell good. Let's cut into them and see what we got here. All right, that's that's going in smooth. That's nice. Look at that. Wow. I'm so excited. This is the moment of truth. Wow. Look Holy cow. <laughs> nice. Nice. Wall to wall. Medium rare. Nicely seared on the outside. Sir, would you care to, to try this? I, I would. I will do that for you. There you just go. Just because I'm your friend. Yep. What do you think? That's incredible. And the great thing is they come with a bone or a handle. Yeah. So you just bite right in. It's like a built-in utensil. Mmm. Mmm. So good. Mmm. It's as good as eating a ribeye. Oh yeah. Definitely. It's so juicy and you can really taste this, the um, the rosemary. I like yep. that. Yep. I like the garlic. Yep. Lamb loves garlic and herb, and uh, this this rub definitely delivers on that. I was worried it was going to be gamey. It's mm -hmm. not gamey at all. No. Mmm. I ate too much. <laughs> Couldn't stop. Yeah, it's just really good. Really good. Perfect medium rare. Seared on the outside, wall to wall rib. That's exactly that's exactly what we wanted to do right there. Doesn't get any better. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Dude. That was awesome. Life altering moment. If you have never had lamb, even if you've had lamb, you've got to try this recipe. If you tried our perfect steak reverse sear cold grate recipe last week, this is as good or better. If you haven't, you need to try that one. You need to try this one. It's a life altering. Uh, this It's that good. <laughs> So yes, if you have any questions about this recipe or want to see any of our other recipes, check out our website at abcbarbecue.com. And also, we have a new Facebook group. You want to tell them about that? Yep, we got a new group uh, on Facebook. It's called Slow It's Here, Owners and Fans. It's, uh, it's been around for a little bit over a week. We've got almost a thousand members. A lot of great photos and content are, are already being posted. A lot of really friendly people. It's, it's a great place to, to interact, talk to other owners, get a lot of great ideas on what to cook. It's Everybody needs to join. Absolutely. And, and join up, show us your pictures. We love to see that. Yes, pictures. And remember, here at ABC Barbecue, we didn't invent the kettle, we perfected it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.